Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? We would like to welcome the chairman of the Board of Endeavor, Edgar Bronfman, Jr. Good evening, everyone. Um, if I can just have your attention for a few minutes before I introduce the, uh, the entertainment. You know, Linda and Peter and others have constantly made remarks about this infamous comment that I made eight years ago when I first came upon this extraordinary organization about, you know, I thought the, the, the organization was charming, but it needed to become important. Um, I, I didn't mean that to be an insult. I just meant that it was such a great model, and it needed to get, we needed to scale it, and we needed to create not 5,000 jobs, but 500,000 jobs, a million jobs. So eight years later, we've created 200,000 jobs, and we're well on our way. Uh, we, uh, but we're moving very rapidly. So we're in 17 countries now. We'll be in, as we said on the video, in 25 countries by 2015. Uh, by that time, uh, we should be at about a half a million job mark. Uh, and then we'll scale pretty quickly to get to a million plus. So um, what you're doing and how you're helping us is absolutely critical to, to creating uh, entrepreneurial ecosystems in each of these countries, most of which have never known what entrepreneurship is uh, and have never experienced the kind of jobs or job growth that entrepreneurs create. And it, it, it is a, a phenomenal, phenomenal opportunity. And as Peter mentioned, We've been asked by a number of communities to bring this model to the U.S., and uh, we'll stay tuned for that, uh, for that announcement, but we'll be, uh, we're, we're very close to making an announcement about that, which is, which is great. Um, I do want to make uh, one, uh, one comment. I don't want to engage uh, Bo uh, again. Um, uh, but I've actually known Bo, uh, I'm embarrassed to say, for... Uh, for about 40 years. Uh, and uh, one of the things that we require uh, of our panelists, our panelists select ultimately the Endeavor entrepreneurs. So each of the countries will put forward their candidates, but the, but the entrepreneurs are actually selected by independent panelists. And one of the criteria that we give the panelists uh, in terms of trying to sort of decide if, if, uh, if the entrepreneur should become an Endeavor entrepreneur is their, their willingness, their propensity, uh, their demonstration of having given back to their communities. Um, if, if we don't feel that's a part of the entrepreneur's uh, uh, plan, they will not be selected as an Endeavor entrepreneur. So, um, because, because it's the ecosystem that matters. It's, it's one or two or three great entrepreneurs that start feeding an entire ecosystem and then it's off and running. Um, so I just have a, a few thank yous uh, to, uh, to get through. Uh, but first, I really want to embarrass uh, somebody because I've been up here a lot of times. Uh, I've said thank you to a lot of people, but the person who's put up with a lot of my travel and a lot of uh, our money and a lot of my time up against Endeavor has been my wife. And I just want to... This is the embarrassing part. I actually want her to stand so everybody can recognize my wife, Clarissa. Please. I also want to thank some of the uh, tremendous supporters of, uh, of Endeavor. The Amidiar Network, uh, which has been our biggest supporter and has just been extraordinarily generous. Abraj Holdings, which has been also incredibly generous and super important to us as we rolled out into the Middle East and North Africa. Um, I want to recognize Bain Consulting. Um, you may have heard of Bain from somewhere or other. Uh, probably happy. No, Bo, Bo, I'm not going there. You, you have to behave now. You have to be Bo, you have to behave, OK? Um, so uh, Bain was in the news a bit uh, during this last presidential um, uh, election. But 
but Bain and Company, uh, the consulting uh, arm of Bain, uh, has been incredibly generous also in terms of the time that they've given to our entrepreneurs uh, in various countries and to us in New York. So a, a big thank you to them. And I also want to thank uh, Barclays, Ernst & Young, uh, uh, Dell, JP Morgan, and SAP, all of whom in various ways have been incredibly helpful and generous to Endeavor and made a difference for our entrepreneurs. La la last subject uh, that I want to uh, raise is you'll see on your table cards uh, that there's a, a card that says stay in touch. Um, Originally, the, the staff at Endeavor asked me if that card could be a pledge card, and I said, I don't want a pledge card. Everybody's given enough money to show up at the dinner. They don't have to be asked for more money. Um, but, but for those of you who are interested in the organization, who are interested in, in devoting some of your time as a mentor or just making connections for some of our entrepreneurs, um, we would love your help. And if you want to fill that out so that we can email you and, and uh, stay in touch with you, uh, that, would be, that would be tremendous. Um, one of the things that we are doing uh, is, uh, Linda and everyone's talked about this Catalyst Fund. This is really important because we've decided that if, if we're picking great entrepreneurs, that ultimately, and they're giving back, they need to give back to Endeavor as well. And so ultimately, we are going to become a self-sustaining self uh, not-for-profit, meaning that uh, whenever an, end an end Endeavor entrepreneur is selected, they not only will pay the local Endeavor office $10,000 a year, but they'll also give Endeavor 2% of the equity. Uh, and, and as that, their companies get liquid, uh, those dollars go to our local offices, and ultimately, country by country, they will become completely self-sustaining and no longer dependent on philanthropy. The same is true at Global, and the way we're doing that is by uh, investing in, uh, in the uh, uh, some of the companies that are raising uh, institutional rounds. Uh, and that is uh, a, a great opportunity. We've, as Linda said, raised $10 million. Our goal is to raise $50 million. And within uh, five to 10 years, if we put that uh, money to work uh, and we do really half as well as our companies would have done if we'd been doing that the past 10 years, we'll be completely self-sustaining. So that's our goal, which is to invite you here for a very long time to dinners, but maybe ask you for less money sometime in the future. Uh, with, with that, uh, let me again say thank you to everyone who's helped make uh, Endeavor uh, what it is today and what it will be tomorrow. And let me introduce our musical guest. Um, this is a young lady, uh, when I was, before I sold Warner Music, when I was running Warner Music, we made a big bet on uh, in, in the UK about three years ago. Uh, and uh, when, I, when I heard her voice, uh, I just was like, this is amazing. She, she writes her own songs, they're beautiful. She has also recorded an album where she's covered some, some songs that had been previously written. She really is uh, extraordinary and, uh, you know, as I said, we, we took, in a sense, a big risk because she wasn't the most obvious uh, choice in terms of the songs that she, that she wrote and, and her approach to music. But our people at Atlantic in, uh, in the UK believed in her. We, we released her album, and frankly, uh, a million albums later, she's doing just fine. Um, so she's an enormous star in the UK. Uh, Warner is just now introducing her into the US. She has a glorious voice. She is a lovely, lovely person who I've come to know, and I'm deeply grateful to her for doing this for us. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Rumor. <laughs> 